Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Rundown. We're going to go over the MLB game schedule for Sunday, April 28th, 2024. If you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, including my daily rundown best bet in the MLB, you can find those at the premium picks tab at pickdogs.com. There's also a link in the description. Alrighty, here we go. Here are the games for Sunday in Major League Baseball. First up, we see the Cleveland Guardians taking on the Atlanta Braves. Ben Lively and Bryce Elder are your starters. You have two starting pitchers that are in good form to start the season, but two guys I don't really trust long term and two lineups that have been, you know, some of the best in baseball, especially the Braves against Brian in pitching. I like him to get to Ben Lively early and often in this game. And, you know, Bryce Elder pitched well in that first start against the Marlins, but the Marlins are one of the weakest lineups in baseball. And, you know, they had four strikeouts in six and two thirds innings with eight base hits given up. I think Cleveland puts the ball in play almost every at bat in this game. Has plenty of base runners and you know scores plenty of runs early as well. Two good bullpens, so you know we have to see most of the runs scored early on. But I still like the over here in Atlanta, Cleveland. Next up, we see the Oakland Athletics taking on the Baltimore Orioles. Paul Blackburn and Albert Suarez are your starters. You know, Albert Suarez, he got the win last time out against the Angels. He's pitched well in his first two games of the season, first two starts, five and two-thirds each game. He's limited the base runners and has nine strikeouts with no earned runs to go with it. And that was against the Angels and the Twins. Teams are near the bottom of the league in, in Team OPS and isolated power against righties, but the A's are kind of in that mix as well. They have not been great against righties, so I think Suarez pitches pretty well. And Paul Blackburn, we're starting to see him regress a bit. We saw that in the St. Louis game where he had five walks given up. Then against the Yankees, he had that rough first inning, gave up four runs and a home run to Anthony Rizzo. So, you know, while he was able to settle down and give the A's six innings in that one, I still worry about him against this really good, really good Orioles uh, lineup. And especially the Orioles, this is an offense that's been able to score early and late. They get after bullpens. And while the A's bullpen's been good, I don't know if it's going to be good enough in this matchup. So I'm going to go with the Baltimore Orioles in this one. Next up, we see the Los Angeles Dodgers taking on the Toronto Blue Jays. Kevin Gosman for Toronto, no official starter for the Dodgers. I'm going to continue to have to fade Kevin Gosman in this spot as you know, he in the, in the beginning of the season, he was able to pitch well enough for the Blue Jays to win that game against the Rays. But since then, he's had four straight losses. And sometimes it's not even his doing. You know, last game, he wasn't miserable against the Royals. It was six and two-thirds innings of no earned run baseball. But he gave up three unearned runs. He only had two strikeouts. And he gave up seven base hits. This Dodgers lineup is crushing right into pitching. Chris Bassett, you know, they got to him really early and often in that game, and Gosman just doesn't look the same right now. If he's not pitching deep into games, it's because he's not missing any bats, and, you know, it's, I would consider Gosman somebody that relies on strikeouts, and sometimes we're seeing him not pitch deep into games, three and two-thirds innings, five innings. So I think the Dodgers are the play here. Even we'll have to see the official starter is. Dodgers' bullpen hasn't been the best, but neither has the Blue Jays, so I'm going to go with the Dodgers on the money line. Next up, we see the Kansas City Royals taking on the Detroit Tigers. Michael Waka and Tarek Skubal are your projected starters. You know, the Royals have not been great against left-handed starting pitching at times this season. And we saw, you know, Cole Irvin a couple or last week dominate the Royals at Kauffman Stadium. And now you got Tarek Skubal on the mound, who's not just one of the better lefties in the league, but one of the better starting pitchers right now in the American League. And he's in good form. I think he pitches well in this game, probably gives a quality start. And the Tigers' bullpen, while it struggled in the first game of this series, has still been one of the better bullpens in the American League to start. So I'm not too worried about it in this game. On the other side, Michael Waka, you'd like to see him a little bit more consistent out there. As a sub-4 ERA, he's pitched fine, but you know he was somebody that racked up the quality starts last year for the Padres. This year, only two through his first five games. Not, not miserable, but his first, those two quality starts were against the White Sox, both starts. So the weakest lineup in baseball. You know, now you're facing the Tigers, a team that's not too much better, honestly. Uh, they're 25th in isolated power against righties, and they're 28th in team OPS. They have a pretty steep strikeout rate. So I think Waka pitches pretty well. I'm going to go with the under here in Royals-Tigers. Next up, we see the New York Mets hosting the St. Louis Cardinals. Lance Lynn and Jose Quintana are your starters. You know, Quintana struggled that last game against the Giants, probably his weakest start of the year. Five run runs, seven base hits, and five innings. That was a 5-2 to two San Francisco victory. The walks are starting to pile up now for Quintana this year. He's got uh, 14 walks given up in 25 and two-thirds innings. And it'd be one thing if he was able to miss some bats you know, and, and earn some strikeouts to kind of counteract that. But he's only got 20 Ks in 25 and two-thirds. So now you got a St. Louis Cardinals team that doesn't have great numbers against lefties in terms of OPS or isolated power, but what they do have is a very low strikeout rate, a very high walk rate, and a very low BABIP. So they're putting the ball in play, they're getting on base via the walk, but their, their batting average for balls put into play is very low at 238. I expect a lot of positive regression 
for this Cardinals offense against lefties. I think I like this matchup for him, honestly, against their former starting pitcher. And, you know, Lance Lynn, he's in, you know, he's it's like similar to Michael Walker. You'd like to see some more consistency from him, but he's in good form. And, and the Cardinals have won four of his first five games to start the year. So he's been a pretty profitable starting pitcher. I like the fact that he had seven strikeouts in that last game against Arizona. The Mets are a tough lineup, especially J.D. Martinez now in the lineup. But I, I'm going to go with the St. Louis Cardinals on the money line. I also think their bullpen is very, very strong. So give me the Cardinals on the money line. Next up, we see the Miami Marlins hosting the Washington Nationals. We're going to see Patrick Corbin and Ryan Weathers as your starters. You know, two lefties on the mound in this one. When you look at Patrick Corbin, you know, it's not it's not fun to back Patrick Corbin, but he pitched pretty well in that last game against the Dodgers. I mean, you know, tough matchup, five and a third innings of shutout baseball. And that was also the second straight start for Corbin against the Dodgers. So you're facing one of the toughest lineups in baseball. You're already struggling quite a bit. You know, you gave up five earned runs against them in the previous game. To bounce back and pitch, you know, five and a third to shut out ball with only three base hits, pretty impressive. And now you're facing the Marlins, who have a very low bat up against lefties, but are also dead last in OPS, dead last in isolated power, and have a you know one of the worst walk rates as well against southpaws. That works well for Corbin, who has issues with his control at times. And you know, while the Nationals are not hitting lefties too well either. I think they have the much better bullpen in this game. I think they find a way to win, similar to what they did in game one of this series. So I'm gonna go with the Nationals on the money line in this one. Next up, we see the New York Yankees taking on the Milwaukee Brewers. Marcus Stroman and Tobias Myers are your starters. I think the, bull, the, the Brewers have the bullpen advantage in this game and in this series, but I think the Yankees have a large enough starting pitching advantage in this game to I'm willing to take them in the first five or the full game as well. As you know, Marcus Stroman's pitched well, sub-3 ERA. He's had some issues with the home run ball recently. He's given up at least one in his last three games, but... To me, I'm not too worried about that going forward. Not yet, at least. He's somebody that still does a good job of keeping the ball on the ground. I think he pitches well. You know, in this game, it's a tough matchup. I mean, the Brewers have a solid lineup against righties, but Stroman had nine strikeouts and five and a third that last game against Oakland. It was nice to see him miss some bats, and his control's been there. You know, I think he pitches well. Myers, you know, I'm concerned because this is a tough matchup. It's a step-up game against the Yankees. You know, he pitched well in his major league debut, but the Yankees have the number one walk rate in, in, in baseball against right-handed pitching. And Myers, some, and when you look at the minor league numbers, not great in terms of the walks per nine. I think the Yankees can, you know, really raise that pitch count early on, get them out of the game early. And while the Brewers have a good bullpen, you, you don't want to see them enter the game in the fifth, sixth, and have to go, the, you know, the rest of the way. So I'm going to go with the Yankees in this one on the money line on the road. Next up, we see the Tampa Bay Rays taking on the Chicago White Sox. Zach Littell and Eric Fetty are your starters you know, to me, when you look at both of these starting pitchers, you know, I think Eric Fetty is, is is in better form going into this game. I mean, Fetty, we mentioned he pitched so well in the KBO last year, and now so far at the major league level, I mean, his first five starts as a White Sox this year, uh, four of those five games, he gave up two earned runs or fewer. He's been sharp for, for Chicago, and 11 strikeouts, no walks in that last game against Minnesota. He's in better form. I mean, Littell gave up five five earned runs and two home runs in that last game against Detroit. He's given up three home runs now in his last two starts combined, and the Rays are one and three in his last four games. While I still am not giving up on Littell, I mean, he's given up 17 base hits in the last two starts against the Angels and Tigers, teams that are in the bottom 10 with the White Sox uh, in, in terms of OPS and isolated power against righty. So to me, the value is definitely with the White Sox. I mean, we saw him compete in the first game of the series, and the Rays' bullpen has been just as bad as the White Sox' bullpen this year. So to me, the values with Chicago, I'm going to take them in this spot. Next up is the Cincinnati Reds taking on the Texas Rangers. Andrew Abbott and Dane Dunning are your starters. I don't like what I'm seeing from Dane Dunning right now, giving up a lot of sharp contact. We saw that in that game against the Mariners. Two home runs conceded. And the Reds, they have a, you know, a lot of extra base hits this year, a very powerful lineup. They should be able, I mean, Dunning's giving up at least one home run in each of his first five starts, a couple of multi-home run games. The control's been off, seven walks in his last nine and a third innings. It's not what you want to see. I think the Reds get to him. And, you know, Andrew Abbott, I do expect regression in his game. Right now, he's got a sub-3 ERA. I don't think that's going to be the case for much longer. And the, the Rangers could get to him for a few runs. But Texas, not great numbers against lefties this year. When you look at the OPS, ranked 25th in baseball. Not what you're expecting for a Rangers team that won the World Series because of their offense last year. But they're 25th in OPS, 25th in isolated power. And they have just under 25% strikeout rates. So Abbott may continue to pitch well in a matchup like this. Like I said, I think we'll you know find some spots to fade him later on. But I'm going to go with the Cincinnati Reds on the money line in this game. Next up, we see the Houston Astros taking on the Colorado Rockies in the Mexico City Series game. This one's going to be 405 Eastern on ESPN. We have Framber Valdez and Austin Gomber, pair lefties on the mound. 
you know, Framber Valdez, his first start back since April 2nd, you know, he was, he was on the 15-day IL. A little bit concerning, you know, in your first game back pitching in this kind of game where we see the total is set super high because it's a higher elevation than Coors Field, which we know has a lot of high-scoring games. And, uh, you know, I, I think the Rockies get to him for a few runs, but I still think he's the better option in this game. And the Houston Astros against lefties, I mean, the last few years, they have absolutely crushed left-handed pitching. You know, Gomber and the Rockies at least have experience pitching in a stadium similar to what we see here, but... I still worry about that pitching staff. I know the Astros pitching staff's not been much better, but the Astros do have the better lineup by quite a significant margin, in my opinion. So I'm going to go with the Astros here and lay the one and a half or two and a half runs. Uh, but honestly, this is a game that I think is going to be more entertaining to watch than uh, interesting in terms of, you know, of a wagering perspective. But I'm going to lean towards Houston. Next up, we see the San Francisco Giants taking on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Jared Jones and Keaton Wynn are your starters. Jared Jones in great form. His last start against the Milwaukee Brewers, a tough lineup. He pitched really well. Six innings, one run. It was just one mistake pitch to Reese Hoskins. It was a home run. But other than that, seven strikeouts, and that was a 4-2 to Pirates win. He is in great form. He misses a lot of bats. There's a lot of strikeouts. And against San Francisco, I think that bodes well for him. You know, Keaton win on the other side, sub-4 ERA. He's got that ground ball percentage just under 60%. You know, similar to a guy like Logan Webb. Does a good job of keeping the ball on the ground at, at Oracle Park. It's exactly what you want to see. And when you look at the Pittsburgh Pirates, this is a team that hits on the ground quite often. Their ground ball percentage is uh, right now number three in baseball at 46.3%. So at a pitcher-friendly ballpark with two starting pitchers that I trust, I'm going to go with the under here in Pirates-Giants. Next up, we see the Minnesota Twins taking on the Los Angeles Angels. Pablo Lopez and Reed Detmers are your starters you know, Pablo Lopez, pretty inconsistent numbers for him this year. He's not really pitching deep into ball games. He has, in uh, three of his last four starts, he's gone less than six innings, which we're not used to seeing from Pablo. And his you know, strikeout numbers are there, though control's been fine, but he's given up at least one homer in four of his first five starts. And I think that the Angels, especially the top of that order, should be able to get to him. Maybe a solo home run or two. A guy like Mike Trout, who's leading the league in home runs right now. And you know, Lopez, the Twins are one and three in his last four starts. So I think the Angels get to him for a few runs early. Reed Detmers, while his last game wasn't his best, he's still pitching really well this season. And that was the second start against the Orioles, very good lineup, in less than a month span. So and we know it's tough for a pitcher to face the same lineup twice in, in a short period of time. So to me, while the Twins have better numbers against lefties and righties, they're right, still right around league average. I think Detmers pitches well in this game, bounce back star form. And while I don't love this Angels bullpen, I think the Twins have the big bullpen advantage. So I'm going to take the Angels in the first five innings on the money line in this one. Next up, we see the Arizona Diamondbacks taking on the Seattle Mariners. Brandon Fott and Logan Gilbert are your starters. Like I've mentioned many times before, I don't think that the Brandon Fott postseason run was a fluke. I think eventually he's going to be a really solid option in this Diamondbacks or whatever team rotation at the major league level. And, you know, he's pitching pretty well recently. I mean, his last 12 and a third innings, only four earned runs combined. But Logan Gilbert is red hot right now. And the Diamondbacks are still, you know, they haven't, they've lost all four of Brandon Fott's last four starts. So I got to go with Seattle in this game. Not, not only is Gilbert hot, but the Mariners are playing great baseball overall in the last week or two weeks. And, you know, Gilbert last start against the Rangers, a really good lineup on the road. He goes six and two thirds innings, six strikeouts, and no earned runs. He was razor sharp. He's pitching really deep into ball games. He's gone at least six and two thirds in four of his first five starts this year. He gives up the occasional home run ball, but Arizona, they're you know, one of the weakest lineups in baseball against right handed pitching right now. So I think it's a good matchup for, uh, for Gilbert. I think the, the Mariners have the better bullpen. So I'm going to go with Seattle in this one on the money line. Next up, we see the Philadelphia Phillies taking on the San Diego Padres. Taiwan Walker and Michael King are your projected starters. Yeah, Tywin Walker making his season debut in this game. I did not like the numbers in his minor league rehab starts with especially not a lot of strikeouts, not a lot of missed bats in those games. I think it's going to take him a while to get to midseason form. And I think early on, especially a team like the Padres, who I think is a pretty underrated lineup right now. You know, I think they've been better against lefties, but still, you know, they do a good job of putting the ball in play. They limit strikeouts. Tatis is off to a great start to the year. I think they get to Walker early in this game. You know, Michael King, we've talked about a few inconsistent starting pitchers on the video today. He could be the number one, you know, the king of the inconsistent starting pitchers, no pun intended. But he, he's just been all over the place. I mean, seven walks in the first game against the Giants. He struck out 10 against the Brewers in seven and two-thirds of one-run ball on April 17th. He has just been up and down. We've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's tough to know what you're going to get from King. You know, he's pitched a lot of games on the road. His last four starts have been on the road. But even at Petco Park, he didn't pitch too well. That was the game where he walked seven batters. So 
Uh, to me, I lean towards the over, but I do think King will be the better option in this game. I'm going to lean towards the San Diego Padres on the money line in this one. Maybe I would honest, honestly I think about isolating this game to the team total over for the San Diego Padres. I think that one, I might just talk myself into a, a nice play there, but give me the Padres, the over, and the team total over. And finally, we see the Sunday Night Baseball Contest on ESPN. It's going to be 7 p.m. Eastern. Chicago Cubs and the Boston Red Sox. Jordan Wicks and Tanner Houck are the starters. Jordan Wicks has pitched well this year. And the, the Red Sox, we know, you know in the, the beginning of the series, they struggled against uh, Imanaga. Their numbers against lefties have kind of been not, not great. I mean, the strikeout rate especially is super, super high. And Wicks has good strikeout numbers, 28 Ks in 23 innings. So I think he'll be able to rack up the strikeouts, maybe worth a look for his strikeout prop over. But... I still think Tanner Houck has pitched so well on the other side for the Red Sox, sub-2 ERA, one of the big reasons why the Red Sox have one of the best team ERAs in baseball right now. Outside of that one game against the Angels, he has been nearly perfect this year for the for the Red Sox, and I think he pitches well in this game, even at Fenway Park, where we know not always, you know, not, not a lot of the Red Sox starting pitchers pitch too well at Fenway, but, you know, I mean, his last game at Fenway was a complete game shutout against the Guardians with nine strikeouts, so... To me, I think it's going to be a competitive game. I, I trust the Red Sox bullpen, honestly, more in this matchup. So I'm willing to take the Red Sox. I think they struggle early on offensively against Wicks, but I think they get to the Cubs bullpen. And I'm going to go with the Boston Red Sox on the money line, lean towards the under as well in this game. And that's it. Those are the games for Sunday in baseball. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comment section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ryder Manelli. Good luck.